Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm back again with another video. So today I'm gonna to be working on my RX TX300 just a little bit, and I'm gonna show you how to disassemble the latest generation IBR in any of the larger skis from SeaDo, and uh, show you how to do a quick uh, wear ring, uh, change out on one of these, and how to inspect the pump just from the visual reference side to make sure that everything's good and it's not leaking. Uh, before I do that though, um, I was gonna make an, a video on installing some new uh, mats that I got from WetJet Performance, but I just didn't really feel like doing that. It actually took a little bit longer of a uh, time than I thought it was going to, but they turned out great and here they are. So these are the latest ones that uh, they have come out with. Let me move this here. This is actually gonna go back to those guys. These are the stealth ones and they're really meant for the, you know, the triple black skis, but I like my things to stay pretty clean looking. I don't really like a whole lot of colors and I wanted it just to accent what the, the red and orange kind of colors that are already on the ski. And they turned out great. I am very, very, very happy with them. Um, the wet jet guy, actually uh, Bishop, he has a video that shows that he just installs these, he puts them over the top of the factory ones. I didn't want to do that. I actually took these all completely off. The ones that are on the body come off very easy. The ones that are on the plastic, they leave a lot of residue behind and it was very difficult to get those off. I had to get a scraper and goo gone and that was a pain. Um, this one back here wasn't too bad, a little goo gone, a rag, rubbed it off and then the back deck came off pretty good. Um, if there was any residue that I had around the edges where it had shrunk over time, I took some Meguiar's uh, 101, I believe, or 100 heavy cut polish and a, um, a little rotary, little drill pad, and I uh, just took it and cleaned it off. It brought all that residue off of it and had a very nice, clean surface to put it down. I, I washed it down with Dawn first to get any kind of grease or anything off of it and then went back over rubbing alcohol and man, they stuck. And let me tell you, the adhesive on these, on my jet boat, I've got hydro turf mats on it, and the adhesive on these from Wet Jet are amazing. Now, if you when you stick it, you better hope that that's where you're going to put it at, because it's going to be very difficult to try to pull it back up. And using a heat gun to try to soften it up can be risky because you can get it too close to the foam. You can melt it. So just know. If you're going to be putting them down, you might want to take um, the factory mats and put some masking tape to have the lines of where they were originally at um, and just give you a little bit better guidance to put them down. I did them all by eye and you can see they turned out really good. So, all right. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get right into um, doing the install. Okay. First thing is first, uh, we're going to have to move our IBR bucket into service mode. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and put our key in, hit our start button, we're gonna pull in on the reverse lever, let's see IBR override, pop up, press mode button. Now we're in and we wanna just press down, get our bucket to go all the way down, okay? Go ahead and take our key out and we'll go around to the back and I'll show you that the bucket is now in service mode. And the reason that we need to do that, as you can see right here, this 13 millimeter bolt is the actuator arm that connects to the reverse bucket for the IBR. So we have to have this all the way down so we can access that uh, service port right there and get that bolt out. So everything back here is gonna be a 13 millimeter, except for the steering cable here. This is gonna be held in by a 10 millimeter. There's no nut on the bottom. It's just gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt that we have to take out. So we'll get right into that now. So the way that I like to do this is I like to take uh, all of these bolts and loosen them by hand first. So it's gonna be a 13 mil here. So loosen that down. see under here we're actually going to be removing this part first right 
So we've got to take the 13 off here, 13 off on the other side, and then the 10 millimeter here. And once we remove those, they're gonna slide out of this. You'll see videos that tell you that you need to take this off. You don't need to do it. Please don't do that. It's, it, you can take it off. This is a pain in the ass to take off and you gotta reseal it. Don't do that. So we're just gonna take uh, 13 off there. We're gonna take 13 of the 10 off here first so we can get the, uh, the steering nozzle out of the way. And then we're gonna take the other 13 off over there. So again, loosen it by hand. You'll have to lift this up and get underneath. Kind of handy to have an extension on this too. It does sit kind of far down in the reverse bucket side. here you can see now this is out of the way you can lower that down and we can get in with our 13 mil coming from the top this time sorry if I'm hitting the camera Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we're just gonna grab this. There we go. We're just gonna flip it like that, and pull it out. Now you'll be able to see inside of here, there's another 13 millimeter there, and another one on the other side. We've gotta remove both of those to get the reverse bucket completely off. Underneath. Loosen. Push down on the bucket. side now we've got access to our jet pump here you can see we've got again all 13 millimeter four of them here that we're gonna take the Venturi off and we've got four brass nylon insert nuts and washers back here all those are 13 as well you we need uh, an extension for these loosen these in the front first Out of the way. Now we can go on to removing the jet pump. Don't worry about taking the washers out right now. When you pull the jet pump off, they will come off the stud. Now we're 
we're gonna reach in, a little wiggle, pull straight out. Grab our washers, should be four of them. Put them over the side. And we wanna check, you can see these little O-rings need to be up here. Let's go ahead and place those back in. And then you've got your O-ring over here for your water pickup. Those are for your bailouts. And we're gonna move over to the workbench now. We've got the impeller out. And we're gonna start taking the wear ring. And we're gonna come here with a five millimeter Allen. And we're gonna remove our three bolts here. And you might have to get a dead blow to hit it a couple of times. I'm gonna see if I can't get it off my hand. Oh, there it goes. Okay, now we're gonna look in here to see if we've got like any suspected water intrusion or anything. Mm. This jet pump was rebuilt by the dealership. It does look like it's getting a little bit of water or this is just starting to kind of blend in. I think it's actually okay doesn't appear to be any surface rust and typically if you're getting even if you're getting just a little bit of salt water in you get any kind of surface uh, surface rust on it but it does look like just like um, the red and the yellow pump be, uh, uh, pump bearing grease is starting to kind of uh, get mixed together is what that looks like so I mean this thing only has probably 10 hours on it since it was rebuilt by the dealership so we would hope that it is not leaking. It doesn't appear to be at this time, um, but we're just gonna just give it a once over and look in there. But again, you'll you'll pretty much see if it's leaking. You'll have, you know, you'll smell it. You'll see rust on the inside, like this nut right here. This has been sitting for a while, so if there was any salt water in there, you'd start to see some rust accumulating. So I'm not really worried about it. Everything looks okay. It's got plenty of pump grease in it, and uh, we're good to go. So now what we're gonna do. I'm going to take it and throw it in the vise over here. We're going to remove, this is the OEM pump uh, impeller boot. I do not use, this is a Solus 1318. I do not use anything other than the factory ones. They seal the best. They're easier to take off. Just please stay with the OEM ones. I know a lot of people say don't use it. With the, the sea dudes having such a high carbon content and their impeller shaft or their drive shafts, I would just say to please just use these anyways. I don't care if people say it gets you more top speed. It's just really not worth it. And I've hit 90 mile an hour on this ski with 135 millimeter supercharged wheel and a cam and a completely stock exhaust and damn near stock intake. So uh, you're, you're, you're gonna be sacrificing and doing a lot more damage by not one you, using one of these to get that little bit of extra speed when I've pretty much proven you do not need to do that. So uh, we're gonna take it off and this is reverse thread. So we're gonna twist it to the right. Okay, so we're gonna put in our impeller tool here, 36 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. We're gonna look in here at this wear ring and uh, it's not too bad. Um, it's still well within spec, but you can see it's got some grooving in here. And a lot of that is actually just from heat. Um, this thing's turning almost 9,000 RPM and the plastic wear rings you can see right here, like that chunk, that's really just from heat. And believe it or not, just that little bit of wear and stuff like that, you'll start to lose speed in it. So we're just gonna go ahead and take it out and put a new one in. So before we can start to take that out, one more process here. We have to take off uh, these two uh, set screws here. Once we get those out, we're gonna use our torch and heat up the wear ring and just pry it out. 
So you can use an eight millimeter socket here to take these out. And these are set screws and they're only used on the 300 model for the wear ring. Um, in the 230s, they don't use it. Main reason, they just don't produce the amount of power that these do. And the reason for it was because the wear ring now is so thin, um, and when it gets hot, there's a possibility that it could spin the wear ring, and you don't want that to be happening. So these set screws are used. I do know plenty of people that don't even bother with these and don't have an issue with it. But I like to do as many things by the book as possible, so that's why we're going to do it. Move our neoprene seal off of here. Now, you're going to see a lot of people that are going to try to put these in a freezer and pull them out or cut them out or different things like that. We're just going to heat it up with a torch on one side, put a flathead in it, and pop the sucker out. So here we go. And it's out. Okay, so the way I'm gonna do this might be a little unorthodox to people, but it does work. So the wear ring is cold. We're just gonna set this on. We wanna make sure that the lip on the wear ring is clipped into all the sides on here, okay? We're gonna take a piece of ply board, put it over the top of it. Take a dead blow, and we're going to try to hit it right in the center. See, it already started to seat. Start seating down like that. And I've got the two 2x4s two here to keep the impeller shaft on the back off of the ground. So we're just going to tap it in. here at bottom out. So now we're going to put it back on the vise and pre-drill our holes for the wear ring. All right, we're back in the vise. We're going to take a small drill bit here about the same size as the hole, the screws, or the, the bolt hole here. I'm just going to drill that through. Spin around and do the other side. Take our two set screws, some blue Loctite on those. And I don't know if you guys have seen this, but the Loctite sticks, I am in love with this, man. Really, really, really like this new design. makes it so much easier. Just torque those back down. We're just gonna do them kind of hand tight. You know, you don't wanna go overbearing with it because you can strip these out and we don't wanna do that. You don't have to have a whole lot of torque. That's good there. I'm sure there's a torque spec for these, and I normally follow all of them, but this one, I just kind of do it by hand, and I cannot for the life of me remember where the torque spec is. So again, 
I'm not too worried about it. And you're gonna see it's gonna bulge out a little bit on the wearing here, but don't worry about that. Once we get the impeller in and it makes its first turn, it's gonna cut that right off. So now we're gonna need to put a little bit of uh, spray silicone in here on our wear ring to help our impeller slide in better. Do have to line these up if this was a fresh impeller it'd probably be a little bit tighter but this one seems to be going in pretty much right away and you can see it's kind of catching but that's just catching because of those little places on the the set screws that are sticking out on the wear ring but we're gonna get a torque wrench and I'm actually gonna torque this down to 150 factory is 92 but the amount of rpm and power and this being a three blade 92 is not going to cut it even like 120 i've torqued them to 120 had to do service on it and it probably took 80 pounds to break it loose so we're going to do 150 on it give it another click Okay, that's good to go. Pull our tool out. Then put our neoprene seal back on. And while this is out, I'm gonna spray that with a little bit of silicone spray because that way, when we go to put this back into the ski and into the pump support, it'll slide in there and it won't snag and possibly, you know, cause like a uh, cavitation or any kind of like air suction or anything that causes to lose speed because what can happen is these will go in dry and it'll pinch it'll open up it'll lay over and you'll lose water through it I don't have the, the big thick seals that you can get for it I haven't really found the need for it these have always worked perfectly fine for me okay, so we're gonna put our impeller boot back on and you can see the threads on this thing are not damaged whatsoever if you were to use like red loctite or something it would completely destroy these Just take a whole lot smear it on with your finger a little overboard on it the last time but i've never had one of these impeller boots back off with this stuff and it works amazing so reverse thread so we're going to be counterclockwise to tighten it and just go by hand I promise you it's not going to go anywhere wipe off any excess when it came out now we're good there we're going to take this back off of the vise and put our nose comb back on so this does have a specific orientation that it needs to go in. Gotta move that hose off of my camera. There we go. We'll blow these out. Now, again, I'm one for following procedure in the manual. However, Loctite and all these holes and salt water does not work very well. Every technician that I know um, they use for saltwater application, they use triple guard grease on the bolts. As long as they are torqued down correctly, you're not gonna have to worry about them backing off. And if you've got a modified ski, you need to be taking your pump off, inspecting things, checking the impeller, doing a lot more maintenance anyways. And um, yeah, so you can go back and retorque everything just in case anything did happen to come loose. But I've yet to have anything come off and I just use a triple guard grease, just like I've been told to do by so many technicians. Make sure we're lined up. And then we're just gonna take our bolts. It's a fresh tube of triple guard grease here, so it's a little messy.
gonna run them down like this at first. And again, we're gonna do these by hand. There is a torque stack. But I have found that it is damn near impossible to get that torque spec to work correctly without completely crushing these sides. And these impeller uh, cones are pretty expensive. So we're not going to do that. All this is assembled. We're gonna go ahead and move back over to the ski and start putting it all back together. All right, now that we're back over at the ski, we're gonna take our triple guard grease. We're gonna take a little dollop of it here, put it on our drive shaft splines. I like to run it up a little bit higher on the shaft as well. that on there we're gonna go ahead and slide our bailout piece here helps to kind of angle down the pump to get the drive shaft to line up and the impeller now if you start to push this on and it's not it's not going on um, what you may have to do is just take a flathead screwdriver or a long screwdriver or a shaft, whatever you've got, move inside and turn the impeller a little bit until it gets the splines to line up. I'm going to put on our washers. Now, these nylon insert brass nuts, it says to replace them every time. This is a 2020 ski. It has 85 hours on it. This jet pump has been out a lot of times because I've done a lot of different impeller variations and stuff. Um, and I've reused these quite a bit. I've never had a problem with it. But I went ahead and I did buy four new ones today. Nice and shiny. So we're going to go ahead and put these on. We use our extensions in a 13 mil again here. First, we're going to just use our little, it's just a little quarter inch impact here. We're going to start at the top left. Run it down until it's tight. Now these are going to be torqued down to 18 foot pounds and we're going to go in the sequence that we just did them in. So top left and bottom right, bottom left, top right, 18 foot pounds. And then we're going to repeat the sequence again. Okay, now we're ready for our Venturi. Now, you do not have to put any kind of sealant or anything on this. Um, you can put some of that 518 if you want to, but I've yet to see a reason to do it. There's not any corrosion or anything. Water is really not going to be coming out of that. 
We're going to set it there for a second. And you can see I've still got some triple guard grease on there. This has probably been assembled and has six hours on it. I'm not going to worry about re-greasing them. There's plenty of it. It'll go right back on and stay together, not build up corrosion or anything. So you're not going to have a problem with that. Same thing, put them on by hand at first. Get the thread started. You don't want to cross thread. You have to break out a tack and die set. doing those to 18 foot pounds in the exact same sequence that we did with the jet pump. And we're gonna recheck. Now the reverse gate bolts are looking a little dry because they do they are exposed to some of the elements on the end so we're going to re-grease those actually all four of these we're going to re-grease them now we can put our reverse bucket up These are going to be torqued to 20 foot-pounds. Now, it is very important that you put this in correctly. I have accidentally multiple times put it in like that. Steering nozzle is correct, but the actual bracket is not. So remember, the service hole goes over here where the IBR arm is at. We're just gonna go back in like we did before. Thread these in. These are also going to be 20 foot pounds. our 10 mil here put our steering cable back in this one is actually going to be torqued to I think it's 65 is what the book says plus or minus like nine or something five something crazy like that i just do it to 70 round out the number regrease our reverse bucket 
bolt here, put a little grease here as well. Drop our IVR arm down. Slide that in. foot pounds on this guy as well. There we go. Okay, that was it. Um, it is a little bit of work. I think total time without recording it uh, typically takes me about maybe like 40 minutes to do one of these. Um, recording definitely takes a lot longer time, but um, hopefully you guys learned something on it and you're able to do this yourself. It is relatively easy to do as long as you have the proper equipment. And, you know, I know the torch thing isn't for everybody, but honestly, it's the easiest way to just take one of them out. I mean, they're plastic. They're destroyed anyways. Heat it up, pull it out, get rid of it. Um, and uh, all the things that I showed you about checking the impeller shaft, pulling the boot, uh, I'm sorry, pulling the um, impeller cone off the back, looking at that, um, making sure there's no water intrusion on it, making sure there's plenty of grease in it. Um, you know, uh, the impeller boots, using the OEM one, using 518 on the threads, all those kind of things make things a lot easier. I know it was Pretty difficult for me to get that impeller boot off, but I, I went a little too gung-ho with the 518 the last time. Took a little bit of heat to get it off, but no problem. It's off, and uh, we're off to the races now. But you can see this is very simple. It is very simple compared to, like, the 2000 um, or the old RXPX 260s. Like, that generation of IBR, I think that one was, like, IBR 3, maybe. Um, yeah, this is way 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 easier than any of them not a whole lot of bolts torque specs are pretty easy to memorize and uh yeah man i mean this is the easiest one to work on um to date so i hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned something please like subscribe and we'll catch you next time